Hi everyone, okay, I've got another great game from Bobby Fischer for you here. He was playing William G. Addison at the Interzonal in Mallorca, Spain in 1970, when Bobby was at the height of his game. He opened here as usual with e4, after which came d5, which is the Scandinavian defense and rarely seen at top level. So e takes d5, queen takes d5, <coughs> knight c3, and queen d8, which is the retreat variation with the queen returning to d8 as opposed to going to a5 which is the other most common response and probably better because it doesn't involve a lot of tempo after d4 then white's effectively had two moves in the opening and black hasn't had a move because his queen's moved twice and just returned to its initial square so knight f6 bishop c4 bishop f5 and queen f3 and here bobby is quick to take as much initiative as he can from his opponent's dubious opening strategy this move is attacking both the bishop on at f5 and the pawn on b7. So Addison played queen c8 to protect both of them. And then Bobby Gambit to the pawn with bishop g5, which is leaving the c2 pawn to be taken. And Addison accepted that now with bishop takes c2. But it probably wasn't a good idea because black's behind in development. And that's really what he should be focusing on now, just getting his pieces into play. Something else like knight c6 would have been better, even after bishop takes f6 and g takes f6. At least black is contesting the central control, and he would have the bishop pair and the open g-file to work with, which is good enough compensation for the double left pawns here. But anyway, the game went bishop c2 and rook c1, which is a good move because it's forcing the bishop to move and preparing some tactical chances on the queen at c8 here because it's on the same file as the rook. So bishop g6 and knight g2. And in this position, black is a pawn up, but he's only developed two pieces, his uh, bishop and his knight here, and he's moved his queen three times. While white has developed all of his minor pieces, has a rook on an open file here at c1, and is ready to connect his rooks by castling, so his development will be completed and his king will be safe. And this kind of advantage is probably worth two pawns in the long run, let alone one. So knight bd7, castles, and e6, which really has to be played to get the bishop out so the black king can castle, but Bobby was quick to get a strong attack with the bishop takes f6, g takes f6, and d5, which is aiming to open the e file, which would be too dangerous for black, really. So Addison played e5 here, but then bishop b5, and it's a strong pin on the knight, especially considering white's control of c6 here with a pawn, bishop, and queen all aimed at it makes the pressure very hard to relieve so bishop e7 and knight g3 which is taking control of further squares this time f5 which has been permanently weakened by the e5 push from black and will be an important element of white's attack later on in the game so a6 and bishop d3 which is aiming to remove the only defender black has of f5 is light squared bishop here on g6 and if the light square bishops were to come off then a knight would be perfectly placed at f5 so queen d8 is what Addison played here which is yet another queen move from black and surely not a good sign Addison was hoping here that Bobby would take on g6 which would allow him either to undouble his pawns or to open the h file for attack but of course Bobby didn't go in for that and in instead played h4 which is threatening to trap the bishop with h5 and it basically forces the weakening reply f or sorry h5 which uh, makes the pawn an easy target here on h5 especially if an end game is reached but that didn't happen Addison's going to resign 8 moves from now and uh, here, bo here Bobby played bishop f5 which is a good move because it's taking advantage of the f5 weakness putting a piece there and preparing to move one of his knights to e4 with a strong central control and some pressure on the backward pawn here on f6 so knight b6 is played because partly because the knight was not a true defender of f6 where it is on d7 because it can be taken at any time by white with his bishop here on uh, f5 and Addison chooses to move the knight elsewhere, but b6 is not an especially good square for it, though. Um, despite the pressure it's applying to 
White's isolated queen's pawn, it's not doing much else. And what's really apparent here is the lack of coordination between black's pieces in comparison to white's, whose are excellently placed for central control and exploiting the weaknesses in black's position. So knight c e4, which is another pawn sacrifice to open lines against the black king. And to accept is really a blunder. Um, due to the tactics and positional advantages it gives white, but Addison was clearly a material player because he played knight takes d5. So then comes rook fd1, and now all of white's pieces are involved in the attack, and black's position is under a serious amount of pressure, and he still hasn't even castled. Fritz assesses the game as equal here, meaning that white has very good compensation for the two pawns, and due to the pressure that black is under, it will it will not be possible for him to hold on to the material no matter how he plays c6 is what Addison played here which is pretty much force the threat if he plays something else for, it, for instance if he simply castles then rook takes d5 is very strong after queen takes d5 knight takes f6 check wins black's queen for a rook and a pawn and leads to a crushing advantage after, for example, bishop takes f6 and queen takes d5. Um, so that's the threat of the position at this stage. And with the king on e8, that's a threat anyway. So one possibility, you know, that I mean, should be considered as king f8, but then white gets a winning advantage with bishop takes g6. After f takes g6, knight g5, exploiting the pin on the f6 pawn here and threatening knight e6 check which would win the queen and um, also discovering a second attack on the knight here at f5 and black's best reply here is to give up his queen with knight f4 but then comes of course rook takes d8 rook takes d8 with a winning advantage for white if instead at um, this stage Queen c8, then simply a rook takes d5, is again crushing for white. So c6 is basically forced. And then came knight c3 and queen b6. And now Bobby, as usual, played the strongest move in the position, which is a powerful exchange sacrifice. Rook takes d5. And after c takes d5, knight takes d5, which assures him a winning advantage in every continuation. Black's queen is threatened here, and he may as well take the pawn with queen takes b2. So now he's three pawns and the exchange up, but white's attack more than compensates for it. After rook b1, queen takes a2, and rook takes b7. And here Addison resigned because his position is completely hopeless. Uh, white just has too many threats for him to meet. First of all, there's a double attack on the bishop here at e7 from the rook and the knight. Also, there's a threat of knight c7 check, winning the rook at a8. And also, bishop takes g6, and uh, if b takes g6, then knight takes f6 check. And white's dangerous rook on a 7th here, as well as all of his pieces involved in the attack, make black's task impossible. Uh, Fritz recommends here bishop takes f5 but after rook takes e7 check king f8 knight takes f5 it's completely lost for black best play continues rook d8 knight takes f6 queen a1 check king h2 and it's very hard for black to avoid the mate his best hope is e4 here but then comes knight takes e4 and the threat is rook takes h7 and king takes h7 and then a quick mate to follow like the only move to avoid this is rook h7 but then there's knight g5 and black has to give up the queen with uh, queen g7 anything else would lose say for example a5 then knight takes h7 check king g8 queen takes h5 queen b1 queen takes f7 check king h8 and queen g7 is mate so it was uh, another brilliant game from Bobby Fischer and very instructive way of how to punish your opponent if he fails to develop quickly enough. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.